All right, welcome everybody to the Living Hope Agency call. I'm super excited for our call tonight. Topic is uh, setting uncomfortable goals and getting out of your comfort zone. So Miss Kasha Stanuski, Joseph Whipple, and Logan O'Brien, they were at our Charlotte conference here just over the weekend, and they all got to participate in a uh, dialing panel. Okay, so this dialing panel was originally supposed to be hosted by me. We were going to get up on stage and there's two other people on the panel, too, where they were going to share their phone script, go over some common objections. And then we got a last minute special addition to our event. And that was our CEO, Sean Mike, who decided to come in last minute. He ended up running this panel with them and going through and talking about the different principles behind, um, you know, how to dial the mindset behind it. Um, what are the word tracks? You know, he asked questions like, hey, what are a couple of things that you do to take control on the phone? He asked a lot of great questions. It really was one of the best panels of the entire um, event. But one of the things that happened was he made a deal. So I, we had different raffles going on throughout the event where Sean was giving away leads. And Sean said, I'll make a deal. These five people on stage, if all five of these people on stage help 30 families in July, I'll give every single person in the room $500 in leads. And there's 180 people in the room. So 180 times $500 is $90,000 in leads of potential giveaways that Sean offered to the room if Kasha, Logan, Joseph, Cody Fuller, and Kristen Perry each helped 30 families in the month of July. And one of the things that was powerful that Sean said is he said, when it's all about yourself, Sometimes we don't work that hard, but whenever you put, hey, now all of these other people, 180 people in the room who $500 could change their life financially, when now it's not about you, it's about them, what's that going to look like? How hard are you going to push when it's not about you? So it's an incredible challenge, but here's the caveat. If one single person on that panel does not help 30 families, nobody gets any leads. Not a single person from the entire event gets any leads. So talk about the pressure being put on. So uh, Kasha, I'd love to hear from you. You know, let's just hear what was your experience like being on a panel with Sean? What did that level of motivation look like leaving the event? And kind of what are some things that you're thinking about, you know, changing and implementing moving forward out of this event? Awesome. Thanks, Jamie. Um, well, I think you know just how nervous I was uh, finding out about that schedule change. Um, Sean Mike can be a little intimidating sometimes, so I didn't really know how it was going to go, but it definitely boosted my confidence a lot that I was able to get up on stage in front of 180 people, including the CEO of our company, um, and set that kind of goal for myself, and um, it's made my belief in myself a lot higher, and it certainly has put the pressure on for myself. So I've kind of figured out a game plan um, because I am the type of person that doesn't do things for myself. But if someone else is counting on me, then that's when I really take it seriously. So have, knowing that there's $90,000 on the line and all of you, your beautiful faces looking at me to make sure that I'm not the one to mess this up. There's definitely some changes that need to be made. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I can be slack sometimes and I don't get on live dials when I'm supposed to be. So that was one thing I've committed to myself is being on live dials right at 730. And I'm making sure that my schedule, there's no blank spaces in my schedule. So I, I'm still gonna be running in home, but I'm going to be adding uh, telesales in between all my blank spaces. So I decided to leave like the first hour of my day open so I can, call, you know, like tomorrow morning, I'll be calling to fill in any blank spaces on for same day appointments and increasing my lead flow to the amount that we discuss and adding some lead diversification. So adding more mortgage leads, I realized that, you know, I'm licensed in different states. I don't have to just worry about South Carolina. So I can buy leads in other states and do telesales on those. I, my goal is to submit I mean, I'm not taking chances here. So my goal is to submit 50,000. That way I can, I'm sorry, 50 families, help 50 families this month. Uh, and by doing so, I'm sure that I can get 30 families approved for coverage. I love it. 
So Kasha, I'd love if you, if you'd be willing to share a little bit about that conversation that we had at the gloves off Airbnb when it came to the leads, because you, yeah. you in the past had had a pretty high lead spend, but also your, your skill set was a little bit lower. And then mm -hmm. you had a time where you kind of got your butt kicked a little bit. So you, you found a way to bring your lead spend back. You kind of started to squeeze your leads a little bit more. And, you know, you've been helping about, you know, 15 to 20 families per month. And, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about the idea of increasing your lead spend. And that was something that was a little bit scary to you. And it's like, if we go from, you spend a thousand a week in leads and you're helping, you know, 15 to 20 families, if you spent another thousand a week in leads, wouldn't it make sense that you'd start helping 30 to 40 families a month? It yeah. would, but it's, it's a scary thing. So talk to us a little bit about kind of where you were at in your mindset and kind of how that started to shift. Absolutely. So I've realized that at the point now, it's not really a skill set problem. It's a lead problem. You know, I just don't have enough leads to book the appointments that I want. So I know that I need to increase my lead flow. Like, if I can help 15, 20 families a month, then there's not a problem with, you know, how I am on the phones or how I am in the home. I'm just not talking to enough people. So it is still a little frightening, but I heard everyone on the Hall of Fame panel say, you know, consistently say they're spending $2,000 to $2,500 a week in leads. And I mean, if that's what everyone's doing, why would I think that if I'm spending half as much, I can have just as good of results? That just doesn't make sense. Um, and I certainly have tried to squeeze the leads. I've been running one month leads. I've been utilizing all the discounts. I dialed back through my leads. I've just always been, um, I've always been cheap. I'm just honest, like I don't like spending a lot of money. I always find ways to stretch every single dollar. But I am running a business and my goal is integrity, which is a huge, you know, that's a real business. And so I don't understand why I would think that I can skip out and cut corners and run a serious business here. So it's taken some adjustments and really just believing in myself that I can make it work and taking that leap of faith. But, you know, having you and Sean Mike and you know, all these people challenge me and by challenging me, it also proves that you guys have the confidence that it's possible. So it's been a definite, a shift in my mindset. And I mean, the pressure is on, but it's the kick in the butt that I need to make get it done. I love it. All right. Well, we'll come back to you, Kasha. I want to hear from the other guys and I'll ask you some more questions here towards the end, but Logan would love to have you jump on here. So obviously that was your first time um, as well on a panel first time as well, you know, especially being trained, you know, a lot of it is we're training the audience, but Sean Mike is like training us live on stage when you're on a panel with Sean. So talk a little bit about what it was like being on a panel with Sean and uh, just kind of any mindset shifts that you maybe have from the event. Yeah. Thanks for having me on Jamie. First of all, you did a great job. I think just organizing the event ran smoothly. Um, and every time I go to an event guys, I get something out of it. And, you know, when I was getting sober and going to AA, they used to say meeting makers make it. And I think it's the same thing in this business because, you know, I've been around doing this five months. I've been to four meetings and every time I go, it's always scary to book the trip and whatever and invest into it. But I always get something out of it that just like changes the trajectory, uh, trajectory of everything for me. Um, and obviously, you know, seeing people in person is great, but you know, Sean Mike made it real easy. You know, he's hilarious. He knows how to work a crowd. And um, I feel like, you know, when people are engaged, paying attention, it just really helps for everyone to get, you know, something out of it. I love it. So if there was another event like this coming up in the next couple of months, like what would your advice be to somebody who's maybe hesitant to, to make the move to come to the event? Oh, dude, if you're hesitant, it's probably something you need to do, you know? Like, like every two months, we should have one of those meetings, I think, um, if not every month and a half, just because it's so beneficial um, for a lot of people doing telesales. It's good to like get out of your comfort zone um, because, you know, it gets lonely sometimes, especially if you don't have people in person yet or you're still uh, working on building the team. So I think it's, you know, one of the best things you could do, not only for your personal development, but your development here as a whole. 
I love it, man. I love it. So what were a couple of things that you got to share on stage from a dialing perspective? What were some questions, if you remember, that Sean asked you and what, what was it that you got to share? Yeah, I mean, mine was pretty uh, simple and straightforward. Like, just go all in with this business. Like, if you're going to be doing it anyway, why not just do it, you know, 100%? Like, just put your all into it, you know. I remember once I came back from the uh, Miami conference, I was like, oh, this is real. And I had to cut out a lot of things that, that weren't um, money making, you know, activities, right. Um, and, you know, make some sacrifices for, you know, comfortability now or comfortability two years from now. Right. Um, so I think that that plays into a lot of it, but it was pretty simple, straightforward, like just get obsessed with this, stop being obsessed with the things that don't make you money or make your life better and, you know, zone in on the things that do. So when Sean made that challenge to you guys on stage, did that make you nervous at all? Uh, I mean, overall, I think, I think it's a good thing. Cause like he said, it's accountability. You're not only doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for others. Um, mm -hmm. but I know personally, if I want to hit 30 families, I gotta, I gotta go for 40 or 50 because whatever, usually I set my goals for, I usually come short a little bit. So, you know, you gotta kind of, um, go for even more than that. I think. Sure. What does that activity look like for you? Obviously you understand what you want to do to, to get 40 or 50, but to get 40 or 50 submit, obviously, you know, guys, just for reference, about 70 to 80% of what you submit will actually issue, you know, just that's a right. general rule of thumb. Sometimes if you write really, really good business and you write all America, your numbers are going to look a lot more accurate in regards to what you submit at issuing. So we find out in the house, but if we've got things that get sent to underwriting, typically about 70 to 80% of what we actually write issues. So for you, from an activity perspective to ensure that you're going to issue 30 policies with 30 families, what does that activity look like on a weekly basis? That's a great question. So I need to submit at least 45, you know, just to be in that kind of safe zone. Um, but, you know, I went through phone burner like a couple of weeks ago um, from all my months since I've been here and my dials are directly correlated with how good of a month I had. So that's what it comes down to. It comes down to, you know, number one, not being scared to invest in leads. Number two, dialing those leads multiple, multiple times. In the beginning, I wasn't really dialing people too much, you know, like, I don't know what it was, but now it's like, I get a fresh lead four times, first time, circle back to them later. And I probably should do even more than that, honestly. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So how many appointments do you think you're going to need to book on a weekly basis? And what kind of a closing ratio do you typically have right now? Yeah. So, I mean, probably somewhere in the range of 35 to 45. Um, most of the time when, when I get on the phone with a prospect and they don't, they don't close, it's either, it's usually because they literally can't afford it. A lot of these people aren't on fixed incomes. Um, but, you know, I would say it's a good 60, 70% now, which I've brought up in the last couple of months. Wow. So guys, if you, you do the activity over a longer period of time, you know, and you condense those time frames, you can increase your closing ratio to 60, 70%. And now it's just for you. I mean, the, the thing that happened for me when I started increasing my closing ratio to 60, 70, 80%, was I started to get confident in my skill set, but that's also sometimes a negative because you hear, you know, I let the activity, you know, um, what I make up in activity, I can, you know, what I lack in activity, I can make up in numbers, you know, but um, I'm sorry, what I lack in skill, I can make up in numbers. There we go. But when you start to get in that 60, 70, 80% closing ratio, we start to say, well, I can make up in skill what I lack in numbers. And we get kind of cocky and confident. And we say, well, I don't need to run as many appointments. Because if I sit with five, I close three. If I sit with six, I close five. And so we do less activity. And then you have a bad day. And then you right, have right. a bad week. And then you start to spiral. And I can't tell you guys how many times that's happened to me here in the last, you know, six to eight months where, you know, I went out and I had a really bad dial day, but I had a great, great two days in the field on not a lot of appointments. So I was more lax on the next dial day. And I got my butt kicked. I got my butt kicked in the field. And then guess what? The next dial day was even harder. And then it was a dog fight the next two days in the field. And then I had to find my way back into that momentum. And that, that really is how it goes. So um, how do you just encourage people just to, uh, to keep that activity high, regardless of what level of closing they've built themselves up to? Yeah, so I mean, for me personally, um, I need to do a better job of diversifying my lead flow. You know, sometimes you find something that works for you and then you get stuck on that. 
So that's what I'm going to be focusing on. And then, um, you know, I'm going to be focusing on reaching out, asking for help a lot more because sometimes you can just get in your own little bubble and like, think it's, you know, you're the only one that has, you know, these problems in this business when there's like, you know, hundreds of other people having those same problems. Right. Um, so that's another reason I think it's important to get to the means, but activity wise, you know, more dials, um, you know, diversify the lead flow, um, more appointments. Cause like you said, some days, you know, for example, if I have 10 appointments on Friday, 10 on Saturday over the phone, some days on Friday, everyone's a no-show. And then all of a sudden Saturday, half the people show up and sometimes it's vice versa. So, you know, just keeping the appointments up and, and everything else is super important. I love it, man. All right. Well, we'll come back to you here at the end with the guy. I got a couple more questions for you, man. But Joseph, what's going on, man? How are we doing? Good, good. Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. I can hear you. Um, dude, you got to not only be on a panel, but you also got an opportunity to speak on stage for 10 minutes um, for the first time. What was that like? I mean, obviously you got to go and be on the dial panel with Sean early. And then we actually had Joseph close us out for the event. So, you know, I'm sure it was a little bit more, if it was me, I'd be more nervous to be on the panel with Sean than to speak. What, what was it like for you, man? So, yeah, I was, uh, I was actually more nervous before I even got on stage. And then once I got on stage with Sean and everybody, I, I was able to calm down a little bit. It was, wasn't as frightening as I was building it up in my mind to be. Um, and then when I did the panel and everything was finished with that, I was like, okay, so that wasn't hard. So I know it's going to be easier when I have to do it by myself. So I wasn't as, as anxious the second time when I had to do it by myself. And just for those uh, people who weren't here, what was it that you got to speak about when you did talk individually? Yeah, I had to speak about consistency in your mindset. Um, so, you know, staying steady to the grind and being consistent, you know, showing up for live dial, uh, showing up for live dials, consistently buying leads, consistently setting, you know, 15, 20 appointments each dial day. Um, just being consistent in, in the day-to-day -day things that we have to do and not, um, you know, we can get into a rut in this business where we know exactly what we have to do and we know if we do it, it's going to work. We just don't do it because we, we do it over and over and over and over again and it gets boring in our minds, but it's crazy the opportunity that we have that if we just keep consistently doing the things that we know to do that's been proven by people, you know, hundreds of thousands of people before us that we're going to have the results. And, and that's, that's what, uh, that's what I spoke on. I love it, man. What was your initial reaction in your mind when Sean made this deal with you guys that he was going to offer that much leads to the entire room? And then he put all that pressure on the five of you guys at any point, did you feel like, Oh man, I got, what if I'm the one? Well, as soon as he said that the first thing I said in my mind was I'm not going to be the one that's going to mess this up for everybody. And it's funny that he said that because that was already a personal goal of mine for July was to help, you know, 30, 40 families. And, and I haven't ever helped 30 families before. I hit 27, but that's the highest that I've gotten. So I got close. So I was like, July, I'm going for this. I'm going to help 30 families. And then when he said that, I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm not hitting this now. So it kind of gave me that extra little push. Absolutely. I think that Sean knew exactly what he was doing because um, I believe you, your 27 families, Kasha somewhere in like the like low twenties, Logan somewhere in the high twenties, early thirties. You know, I think Cody Fuller's had a pretty large month, you know, more in like the fifties and then Kristen, you know, in that similar 20 to 30 range. I think he knew exactly what he was doing by putting that challenge on you guys, because he knows that when you break that 30 family mark on a consistent basis, you'll never go back. It's yeah. like the coolest thing in the world. Once you learn how to help 40, 50 families, you'll never help 20 again. Like Sean talks about when he hears somebody who says they helped 20 families, he's like, I've never helped that little families ever, you know? And he, it's, it's funny how he says that, but it's because he worked so much. And yeah. when you get that new ceiling of, okay, 30 families, that's normal because all I have to do is do my job. And if I make my job, I need to help 10 families a week or I'm not coming home or I'm not getting off the phones. If you help 10 families a week, 30 of them will issue. You know, it's, it's really as simple as that. So um, I guess just what were some other things that you maybe learned from the event, Joseph? I mean, there's a lot of things that happened from eight to five, um, a lot of different speakers. What were some different things that you took away that you're going to go and implement into your business? Yeah, um, I think one of the big things was just every time that I go to an event, 
and I get to see the Hall of Fame panel and see everybody up there who's helped over, you know, 400 families in a year. Um, it just really makes it real to me that those people are no different than any of us. They just either have more time in the business or, you know, they're just more consistent because Hall of Fame is a consistency award. And, you know, when you see like Mike up there, then I really know anybody can do it. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, you know, it, and just being in the office with him every day and, and seeing like he's not that much different than me. Like if I just do the same thing over and over and over again, you know, if you're just consistent and you just stick with it, like Sean said, Sean told us backstage, he said, I've never done 20 before. He said, I would have to be dead to help 20 families in a month. So <laughs> I was like, okay. So I thought I was doing good here, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely I'm going to try to make 30 my new minimum and, and just be consistent with that going forward. You know, my topic was about consistency. So I want to consistently help 30, like you said, for the rest for going forward now, even you know, in four week months, I want to consistently do 30. Um, and if Kasha is shooting for 50, then I'm shooting for 60 or 70. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my goal. Um, try to submit 60 to 70. And I'm going to, I'm also going to, for the first time, attempt to do that all telesales. So 100% okay. telesales. All right, let's go. So here, here's one thing I want to make sure that I, I share with just kind of everybody here on the call is that when you look at the Hall of Fame panel, None of them are, so I, I'm going to try to say this in the most politically correct way possible. None of them are really that good. None of them are really that much better than 30 family producers. Okay. So I think like there's a, something that happens at when you protect 30 families in a month, you've proven, you know, how to sell insurance. And I don't really think many people, I think there's a small percentage of people that get really, really good. And they're actually like a 40 to 50 family a month person. They just buy more leads. I think from a skill set perspective, almost every single one of those Hall of Fame producers who are in like the four or five, 600 range, they're 30 family a month producers who spend more on leads than everybody else. So they spend not a thousand a week, they spend 2,000, 2,500, 3,000. They give themselves twice as many opportunities, twice as many swings. And by getting twice as many opportunities and twice as many swings, um, obviously exponentially their results increase. And then they do that consistently over time. And guess what? It, the person who has more swings gets better faster. You know, it's as simple as that. I mean, you look at somebody who, you know, part-time does this and they run five appointments a week versus the person who runs 30 appointments a week, the person trying to get to a hundred appointments, it's going to take the person who runs 30 appointments a week, less than a month. And it's going to take the person who runs five appointments a week. What is that? five. Okay. I can't even do math. Five months, five months of five a week. Okay. So you got to think about that. So now it's like, we put these people who are hall of fame on a pedestal guys, the major difference. Like if I honestly look back at my hall of fame run last year, I never spent less than 2000 to 2,500 a week on leads. Now the difference is I developed a confidence in myself that if I had enough names and phone numbers, I would find a way to make it happen. I would find somebody in there who was looking for insurance. I would find people in there that were looking for my help. I knew that I had a skill set. You know, I've talked about it before. Take away everything that I have and give me a thousand bucks and say my rent's due in five days. Am I paying my rent or am I buying leads? I'm buying leads because I've developed a skill set that I know if you take everything from me, but give me a stack of leads. I know for a fact that even if I have the worst dial day ever and I'm able to just make my money back and try again, I can do that over and over and over and over again. I can help one family at least over and over and over again off a stack of leads until I help 10 families. And now I'm ahead. And then I do it again and again and again and again. And that's the only difference between a Hall of Fame producer and somebody who's not. They've gotten to the point where they've learned enough to sell insurance to 30 families a month and the 50, 60, 70, 100 family a month people they just spend more money on leads. Steve Giordano, four, five, six grand a week. That's the difference. They spend more on leads, more opportunities, more people to talk to. Um, Kasha, what's your goal for the year? And what do you want to do looking to going into convention? Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. So knowing the way that you started the year, which you've had some good weeks and good months, 
but not necessarily on track for Hall of Fame. What does that look like for the rest of the year? Well, that's why I think this was like a pivotal moment because I had been thinking about it and I just get in my own head and then like I psych myself out. But like you were saying, as long as I can just, if I can do this once, then there's no reason why I can't do it. It's just an act. It's just activity. Like I already know what to do. So I just need to double down on my activity and uh, just have a couple of really great months. And that I've been watching a lot of podcasts and a lot of people that hit hall of fame. That's kind of, a lot of people were behind and then they kind of stepped it up. And so yeah. I, I was intimidated at first, but did some math and I know I have my eye on the prize. So it's the math and it's the activity, but there's, mm-hmm. there's another part that I'm going to ask you and kind of put you on the spot for, okay. um, and at least Joseph and Logan will get a little bit of time to think. I'm just going to put you on the spot. But in the back of the program, it said, what's your goal? But then it followed up with, what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? So that, that's my question for you. What, what are you willing to sacrifice for the rest of this year to develop the habit and the skill to be able to hit Hall of Fame? My sleep. I, I, I struggle getting up in the morning. Josh is laughing because he knows, but that's why I like committing to being on live dials at 730. That was, that was a big step for me. And uh, the next big thing that I'm going to give up is excuses, excuses for why I can't, excuses for why I fell short. Um, So really just replace all that with consistency and doing what I said I was going to do. I love it. Thank you. Logan, same question, man. What's your goal for the rest of the year? And what is it that you need to sacrifice in order to get it? So I just did the math. Um, so what we got like maybe six months left in the year, right? Yep. Just rough estimate. So I need to hit at least uh, 46 families a m- or 47 families a month uh, until December in order to do that. So um, yeah, I'm going to have to hit, uh, aim for 55, 60 and, you know, um, hopefully make that goal, but sacrifice wise, just, just do more. You know, that's what it comes down to. Um, most people I've noticed you do more in replacement of what? So like, what, what is it that you just, that you hold valuable outside of this goal that you might have and guys, I want to make sure I preface with, you don't have to give up what you're giving up forever, just for a little while. You know, we talk about teachability, Like how bad do you want to learn this information? And we know how bad we want to learn it based on what we'd be willing to give up for a certain period of time in order to learn that information. So what does that look like for you, that thing or that time that needs to be sacrificed in order to achieve that type of goal? Yeah, so I usually take Sundays off. So probably going to need to cut that out, add some more appointments on Sundays. Um, Because also I'm the type of person, like if I take a day off, I'm like, I get out of the groove so easily. And then this business, you go one or two days without protecting a family. It's like, it just kind of psychs you out, or at least for me, it feels like. Um, so just staying, you know, in that consistent groove, being obviously being more uh, disciplined with my time, you know, um, not taking as many breaks or not, you know, relaxing as much, stuff like that. Um, and then also the sleep factor. I mean, I can't stand it when you and Grady say you only need six hours, but I mean, you're right. I just you know, I just want those extra two so bad. So probably going to need to cut that out too. I'll tell you right now on six hours of sleep, you are going to be tired. I just want, I want to make sure that everyone doesn't think that like, we just walk around like, Oh yeah. Like uh, some people, some people wake up six hours, fine. I'm tired, but it's like what I'm willing to sacrifice to get to that goal. So I appreciate you sharing, man. Joseph, same question. Yeah. So I just did the, the math as well. And um, mine's a little higher than Logan's, um, but I got to hit at least 55 to 60 families a month from now on. So um, that's what I'm going to be shooting for. And I think just increasing my appointment uh, count to make sure that that activity is there, because recently I have been comfortable with not having as many appointments because I know that if I have, you know, whereas when I was in home and, you know, now doing telesales, if I had six appointments and I sat with five, I was going to close at least, you know, three or four. 
So just making sure that I have at least six to eight appointments every single day and no less than 40 to 50 appointments a week. So like just using Brody and Mike's schedule, same day appointments running at least six days a week. That's 48 appointments if you do eight appointments every single day. Um, so that's going to be my goal is to make sure that I don't slack off when I'm setting my appointments and make sure I actually hit that eight appointment every single day to to guarantee that the numbers are going to work in my favor. So this is a question for any of you. Any of you all can unmute. Um, when it gets hard, because it's going to get hard, and when you have a hard week and you're on the emotional roller coaster again, what are you going to do? What are you going to remind yourself of? Like, what's that reason why that you're going to push through on the week where it's hard? Because it's not going to be 15 families every single week. It's going to be one week you do seven and another week you do 25 and then you do 12 and then you do 30 and then you do 10 and then you do 10 again. Then you do 30, then you have two, then you're like, crap, I'm way behind. And then you do 20. Like, what, do you, what are you going to remind yourself of when you have that hard week and you're thinking about maybe I should give up on the goal? Yeah, so I think um, just like the way that everybody in the crowd and Sean was looking at us when he said um, that, you know, if, if you guys help 30 families in a month, that, um, you know, these people are, are going to get $500 of leads. So just seeing, replaying that in my mind, you know, as we go into next month and knowing that I don't, I'm not going to be the one person that doesn't do that. And then just kind of keeping that same momentum once I prove to myself that I can go over 30, because ever since convention, I've had be a, a 30 family producer written on my mirror in my bathroom. And I have never hit it before. So it's been there. I see it every single morning. And it's it's like, I, I think I've built it up to be something more than it is. It's like a goal that I'm like fighting so hard for that I haven't ever hit. And once I hit it, then I think everything from there on will be a lot easier to stay on track. Love it. All right. Uh, Logan, Kasha, same question for you guys. Can you repeat yeah, so one more time? I'm sorry. That's okay. When it gets hard, what are you going to remind yourself of when it doesn't go exactly perfectly proportionally according to plan with I'm going to help equally this many families every single week and you have a week where it's hard and a week where it's good. Like, what are you going to remind yourself of? Like, what, like what's the reason you're even doing this? It's time to be different. Like, that's just the biggest thing is I've, I've fallen short so many times and like, there's no reason why I can't do it, you know? So the fact that Sean wouldn't have challenged us if he thought that we couldn't do it. He wouldn't set us up to fail. He pushed us because he knew we could do it. And sometimes you need a scary CEO to say it in front of almost 200 people to really, you know, spark that fire under your butt. Like I said earlier, it's, you know, when, when it's just you counting on you, you're willing to fall short because you know it's just hurting yourself you're not hurting anyone else but like I brought a new girl that she's actually just she's about to take her exam and she won a thousand dollars in leads which by the way everyone needs to bring people to events because there's lead giveaways and if you can get a new person before they even start with a fresh batch of leads that they didn't pay for that's going to change the whole trajectory of their business but seeing how you know excited she was I mean I didn't come into this with a lot of money and there's people in that crowd that, you know, may be struggling and they're counting on me and I could change their financial future. So knowing that that's on my back is really going to, you know, make me go to bed a, a little earlier tonight, wake up earlier tomorrow and make, make me door knock when I don't want to door knock, make that one extra phone call when I don't want to make that phone call, when make me dial the fourth time when I got hung up on. So really just, you know, it's your faces. That's what I'll imagine. I'll imagine Sean Mike yelling at me if I don't do this. So, you know, that's kind of the motivation I need. I love it. And Logan, what about you, man? Yeah, I'm just, I mean, I'm just going to think of the, you know, new agents in there that, you know, there may be a weekend, two weeks in, two months in, whatever it is. And um, how, you know, just 500 bucks worth of leads, they could turn that into, 
you know, um, two, three, four, five families helped and it completely could change their life. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just help those people keep me accountable. Um, you know, long-term wise, you know, obviously this is a great opportunity and, um, you know, I just want to live a life where I'm always growing and, and taking more risk and being around the right people overall. I love it, man. Well, everybody, thank you so much. I think the main thing I want to leave y'all with is that the mind once expanded can't go back. So it's like, that's why trying to set new goals. It's like, it's a video game. I'm trying to set a new high score, I'm trying to get a new high score on my dials, you know, on my uh, appointment count. You know, I saw that you know, when we were on here, Josh shouted out and I'll shout him out. So I want to make sure Dawson, Bruce and Courtney Warren were having their best dial day record ever. Dawson set 15 appointments and Courtney set 13. But once you do that, it's like you proved to yourself that you can do it. Now you're like, I could set at least 13. I could set at least 15. What if I set 16? What if I set 17? What if I set 18? What if I just got one more, one more? What, there's, I think there's an FFL agency. It's FFL one more. And I love that. It's just like, can I do one more? Can I help one more family? Can I do one more dial? Can I set one more appointment? And I think that's just an incredible mindset to have. So no matter where you guys are at, whether you guys are on the trajectory and the challenge of what Kasha, Logan, and Joseph are doing right now, or you're like, I've only ever helped one family in a month. Well, can you help two? I've only ever helped two families in a week. Hey, I've only ever helped four families on a weekend. Can you have your first 10 family weekend? Compete with yourself. Kasha said it right there. Like comparison is not a good place to be in this business. It, you, some of y'all are on this call and you're looking at, you know, Joseph, uh, Logan and Kasha, and you're saying, wow, I, you know, they're competing to help 30 families a month. I'd like to just help 10 families in a month. You're comparing like your chapter one to their chapter 10. And then some of y'all look at like Mike Curry and you're comparing your chapter one to his chapter 30. You know, you just have to understand that it's just, you're not competing with the other people. You're competing with yourself and you're trying to do one more, one little bit more of a high score than you've ever done before. Um, that's what it's all about. That's how we get better. So guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you for sharing tonight. I think there's a lot of great nuggets that were pulled out of this. Um, guys would love to see y'all at the opportunity events all around the country. We'll keep on promoting those. We're gonna have another big event here in the next couple of months. We'd love to see you guys there and we'd love to see you get on stage. Okay. You have an opportunity guys, what you do over the next 90 days, what you do over the next you know, 180 days, there are people on this call right now that could be speaking at the Miami Loan Depot convention. And some of y'all maybe don't believe that, but guys, I was able to speak at the national convention my first eight months in the business. Okay. They're looking to put new people on stage. They do not want the same people every single time. They want new rising star producers on those stages at all these major events across the country. And that could be you, whether you're just starting today, you're someone who's in right now trying to figure it out, that could be you. So I appreciate y'all. I hope everybody has an amazing night. If you guys have any questions, please reach out. We'll talk to y'all soon. Peace out, guys.